Okay, continuing. I um, <laughs> got reorganized here for a second because I got so many documents and I was in the process of making a point and I realized I couldn't make it. Nonetheless, I left off the last time discussing the prospects of uh, Mary Berkeley passing on some wealth to Dr. Charles Morton. Um, Mary Berkeley had an annuity during her life, at least from her father's will. Um, it usually, I, I've seen situations where wills were written before daughters have married, and there usually was some kind of provision, you know, they would need to get married at some point. I don't remember seeing that in Henry Berkeley's will, but we're, you know, we're gonna go, we're gonna go down the whole gambit. Um, so it's nebulous. I mean, maybe she could have used that annuity and saved, and the money could have been saved and built up or used to purchase the land in Westmoreland. It's not really clear, but it doesn't seem that an annuity that he doesn't specify the amount about um, is going to end up <coughs> resulting in a place at Twickingham and Irish estates. So, you know, I could be wrong, but it doesn't seem like it. The next possible source of wealth would be a series of events that basically uh, would take, could, uh, possible source of wealth resulted from a series of events that could have happened between uh, Dr. Morton and his wife, uh, born Mary Pratt, and um, who first married um, George Savile, and then she married uh, Captain Wallace, Thomas Wallace, and then after that, she married Dr. Morton in 1767. Now, I, I didn't get to the implication about what, what appeared in the Dictionary of National Biography and what, what that might have amounted to and everything. Now, the Dictionary of National Biography, and I've kind of jumped back a little bit here, but I'm just going to go with this. The Dictionary of National Biography was a little harsh about Dr. Morton's choice to marry uh, Elizabeth Pratt, who was much younger than him. And they, they kind of implied that he was just lazy and didn't do much, and they, and they kind of rested most of the blame on that and him not producing a doomsday book. And doesn't really talk much about his involvement with the Royal Society. It seemed a little bit against him in a way. Um, that's what I meant about the echoes of Abraham Farley's party winning out in history thus far. Um, now, given, you know, let, let's say, let's assume that, that Oxford had a bit of a hostile feeling towards Dr. Morton. Imagine what they would have found out if um, they knew that Dr. Morton actually had married Lady Savile in uh, 1767, while they supposed that Mary Berkeley was buried in 1768. I doubt there's a divorce record anywhere that they, they, they wouldn't find one. If uh, the peerage is right, and she was actually, she actually died in 17, the 1750s, I wonder what they would have said then. <laughs> so um, I wanted to be sure to add that. Um, you know, the Collins Peerage does say Mary Berkeley died in the 1750s. Otherwise, they're going to assume he's both a bigot and a man that likes to marry women many years younger than his age. Now I'm going to get into a very interesting discussion on a different topic. Not, it's, it's roughly rich. It's, this is, the topic is going to be about Mary Pratt and her wealth and how it might have or the people she married, and how that wealth may have landed in the hands of Dr. Uh, Charles Morton. Now, on the one hand, we have Mary Berkeley getting an annuity that probably would have ceased when she died, and the most could have maybe mustered that farm in Westmoreland County. I still have my doubts, but you know who knows? He, he you know he was a doctor, he was employed. Um, Clearly, his relationship with the Berkeley family uh, carried on. You know, he got his recommendation from Lady Vere. He got his um, 
um, you know, Elizabeth Wortley Montague lived, you know, lived in, was married to a um, descendant of Charles II, so was Lady Vere. The Berkeleys had a marriage, by marriage connection to that uh, Stuart background of monarchy. But I, I'm digressing. Let's just get to the point here. So Mary Pratt was the daughter of the Vice Treasurer of Ireland, who it is supposed uh, or said, I can't cite the source right now, that he um, had, um, he was the Vice Treasurer of Ireland, and he was arrested, I believe I remember this right, in 1724 uh, on suspicion of embezzlement. Now, <coughs> Mary Pratt ended up marrying George Savile. And let's just look it up right now. Why not? Um, Nineteenth December, seventeen twenty-two. Charles Morton was six years old. If, the, if his birth year is correct, <coughs> maybe close to seven if he was born early in. 1716. Now, <coughs> George Savile, this is alluded to in the records of the Lumleys of Lonely Castle that, you know, George Savile was having some difficulties, it was very illusionary with, with, with Lady Savile. Well, now, now we have better evidence, and these come out of the manuscripts of the Earl Edgemont. A diary of the first Earl Edgemont, his Count Percival, and this, these are the date ranges 1734 to 1738. So I, I have some areas highlighted here, and I'll just go through this, and the purpose of, of, of reading these things is to give an idea of the, the personal relationship between Mary Pratt and George Savile, and then you then, <coughs> then of course, is the rest is speculation, um, and I'll I'll talk about that speculation when I'm done. Okay, so this is 1733-4, back when they used to have the year end in March on January, so they had like a slashed year. It says Sir George Savile visited me, and I went with him to the house where Sir Joe Bernard presented a petition for the hindering of the running of wool in England and Ireland and of woolen manufacturer of Ireland in its foreign part. Then he visited on the 4th of the month I don't know, George Savile. And in 1736 he mentions also that Sir George Savile has again taken his wife who had been discovered playing pranks with a neighboring gentleman. She did, but as her mother, Miss Pratt, before her. Now, let's let's get into this. I don't know what they mean by playing pranks, but I get the idea. Maybe that, well, um, she had an affair. Um, but I'm not sure. You know, I'm not sure what that that um could just literally be pranks, like you know. Putting a, you know, taking all the oranges off his tree when he was asleep, or it could have been more something more serious. But we'll see later on in <coughs> more of the discussion that he has with George Savile. He goes into great detail about um, that may mean that she was having an affair. Now to get back, who who is Mary Pratt's mother? Mary Pratt's mother was Honoretta Brooks, and Honoretta Brooks. Um, is said in either notes or in queries or the gentleman's magazine. I'm not sure at this moment, um, <coughs> but I but I do remember that it said that she also was um, a lady of the bedchamber, and it's supposed that um, by this by saying this here, if if I take pranks to mean what I think they mean 
it's implying that Honoretta Brooks here had an affair as well. And Honoretta Brooks, I don't remember who she was Lady of the Bedchamber to, but um, usually the ladies of the bedchamber ended up being the ones having an affair with the king of, of, of England. It seems like it turns out that way, and if she was alive... I wish I knew my dates a little better, but I'd almost say that um, maybe she might be a little bit too old to have been with <coughs> Charles II, but I can just look this up here, I guess. <coughs> no, this would be after Charles II. Uh, he died in 1685. Whereas she would have been six years old when he died, so there's just no way. And who succeeded him? Jeans the seventh in, in second. And I could imagine <coughs> who was he coronated? 1685. I can imagine pretty late into his, um, after after he was after he pretty much abdicated, um, you know, the Glorious Revolution took place, and William the, the, the Third and Second and Mary the Second became the King Queen of, of England at that time, and of course the Jacobites are the individuals that are um, that believe that the descendants of James II and not William of Orange should really, to this day, hold the throne of England. <coughs> and um, I've been loosely calling uh, Charles II's illegitimate children Jacobites. Um, nonetheless, yeah, I, I, not necessarily correct, I suppose. Nonetheless, I imagine if Henry, if I got this right, and Henry Andrew Brooks was Lady of the Bedchamber, that got supposedly she got a lot of money from being Lady of the Bedchamber, and, and that's how she got her wealth. And that um, her husband John Pratt was actually um, impo not really impoverished, but he didn't have any wealth after the whole incident with the Treasury in Ireland. So um, nonetheless, here's. There, there was Henrietta Brooks, it's Murray Pratt, and of course her two brothers died at Phoenix Park in Dublin. <coughs> so, so he's supposing this uh, Pearl of Edgemont, who I'm not exactly sure this this actually was, um, was saying that Mary, Mrs. Pratt, Honoretta Brooks, was uh, having affairs. <laughs> Now, he, he seems, every once in a while, the Earl of Edgemont here will say something about, you know, visiting George Savile and whatnot, but we don't get, not until we get till <coughs> 1735 and 6, on uh, Wednesday the 21st, that he um, goes into details, and he says, Sir George Savile came to me and acquainted me with some circumstances of an unfortunate story and to advise me what to do. He said the woman's sex are generally against him and they influence the men, except those for whom he thinks proper to give satisfaction to, blah, blah, blah. He said the married Miss Pratt purely, <coughs> he might have a virtual life, and he was to have her with 10,000 pounds. So the indenture, supposedly, he's supposed to get 10,000 pounds as a part of the marriage by the indenture agreement. Again, now, I'm... Yes, so the reason why George Savile would have paid ten thousand pounds to Murray Miss Pratt is because, <coughs> well, John Pratt had no male heir, so all of his wealth, one would think, would accrue to um, his daughter Mary Pratt, and by that accrue to um, George Savile. Now. <coughs> And I'll get into some other things about this. Now, basically, he was saying that 
she refused to bed with him and 